I'm going to create this scene in Blender in about 10 minutes and I'm going to use the Apocalypse Collection from Big Medium Small. It's a collection of people and vehicles in an uh, apocalyptic way. First of all, I go to the Asset Browser and I browse down to the Apocalypse Collection. I bought the bundle. It contains around 150 items and it takes a little while to, to load in. And in the bundle you, you can see you have all these kind of the soldiers that we're going to use. Uh, but also other elements like people in hazmat suits. And you can see uh, rubble and a, heli a helicopter and, uh, and so on. I'm going to just drag and drop the things that I'm going to use for the scene. And the soldiers, it takes a while to load them in. So while they are loading, we can look at some of the renders that are possible to achieve with this uh, uh, collection. It's, it's really high quality and, and really amazing to work with. I'm going to drag in the second soldier and it's going to load again. And you can see some other examples while it's loading. Um, all uh, some, some of the soldiers are, are rigged so you can use them in a way that you find suitable, uh, position them in a, in a way. I'm just going to use two soldiers that are already set up and ready to use. And then it's just adding things to the scene. I'm going to take this kind of destroyed building and also the, con the container um, and uh, some kind of uh, rubble and the walls. So it's just really easy to just drag and drop it into the scene. And when I have all the, the elements that I'm, I'm going to use, I can uh, I can choose to, to close the um, the asset browser, um, but of course I could also leave it open and keep adding uh, things to the scene as I go along. But for from this scene, I just, I know what I'm going to use, uh, and um, yeah, and now I'm going to position the camera. Um, you can see the ground. Uh, we have some some rocks and different things on it, and I'm going to position the camera in a, in a you know in the the right angle. And if you seen some of my other videos, you know that I spend a lot of time on adjusting the camera, moving it around, and getting the framing right. And um, that takes a lot of time for me to, to get it, get the, the framing right. So just uh, I hope you uh, you follow along, even though I spend maybe too much time on. On the, on the camera but I think it's really important to to get it right because it it really uh, the render it's um, you can really add something to the render if uh, if you have positioned all the things in the right way and the camera is is in a good place for instance if you want a more dramatic look you can place the camera in a, in a, in a lower angle. Yes now I'm messing around with the the ground a little bit. Um, you can see now I turn off the uh, asset uh, browser because we don't really need it anymore, and I move the the soldier so he's, he's not standing in the ground but on the ground. Um, you can press seven on your numpad, then you go to this view and you can press uh, Alt D on your keyboard to duplicate different things on your scene. And here it is, the ground I'm duplicating, and then you can press G and you can move it around. Um, so a quick way to just build up the scene. And I'm adding the rubble. You can see there's um, kind of an edge between the the two um, planes that are uh, with, with, with stones. So I'm just going to cover it up. And I have the car and I'm going to position that in the background. For me, it's important to have something that's uh, that have some kind of details at the background, but it's not like stealing the, see uh, the scene, you can say. Uh, but I'm not really happy with the way I position the car, so I spent some time getting it right. You can see it has some kind of uh, a broken windscreen, and um, I just wanted to uh, to be visible in the scene, but not kind of like say overtake the scene. So um, yeah, put it there, and then it's um, the walls. 
to add something like it's some old buildings or something that are left standing after the apocalypse. I don't know. G to grab them and you can just put them down. If you press G and then Z or X or Y then you can move them uh, kind of like in a locked direction that can be uh, useful. Um, but right there I'm just picking them up and moving them around. And you can see the car still not happy with it, moving it around. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you can see the scene is, is kind of like coming together quite fast, um, but of course you're still uh, missing a lot of things. In the background, you have this kind of destroyed building with some metal pipes or something, um, and I'm just going to add that uh, in the background. It's going to be a little bit blurred out, and it's just to give some kind of feeling that there are was uh, an old building that has been destroyed and I'm duplicating it or D moving it to another part of the scene and I'm just using the, uh, the left part so it's not the same as the right part uh, so so you can see the, the 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 metal pipes are kind of different so even though it's the same it doesn't look like it's uh, it's it's the same in the image Yes, then I have this kind of broken pillar and I wanted to cover the edge in, in the foreground and uh, I'm not that satisfied with it so I'm moving things around here and getting them into position. It's really you can say some kind of small details and maybe I'm spending a, too much time on it and maybe people wouldn't really notice but I just thought that yeah, maybe I just thought that it, that it it made sense to to make it uh, this way, and I like adding things to the foreground, so I duplicated um, one of the the rubble things and uh, just position it to the right of the camera. It can give some these extra details, um, adds some extra uh, to 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 the scene, and then we have the soldier in the background. Just have to avoid him standing in the ground. He says he has to stand on the ground. So just get him lifted a little bit. Um, and I'm still not happy about the edge, so I change the position of the the pillar uh, again. And maybe this time I can get it right. Let's hope. Uh, I think it's about it. Yeah. And then I just have to look at the feet because it's important that uh, he's not um, a rock is not uh, entering his boot or something is so it's kind of like looks really stupid so just making sure that it's okay and then I go to the camera setting and I uh, choose depth of field and I just uh, use the eyedropper and focus on the the, the soldier in the foreground. I go for f-stop of 2.8. The lower the f-stop, uh, the more black uh, blurred out the background will be. Then I um, use the um, add-on true sky to add a sky to the scene. It's the default sky and I'm just rotating it to uh, get it in the right position. I'm changing the direction so uh, the, the rotation so we get a little light on the wall so it's not that dark. Um, and uh, then I'm going to change the height a bit, so I will pull down this to get this kind of like uh, sunset kind of feeling, or sunrise or whatever. But and then I'm adjusting the uh, the, the container and background, and you can say the the image is really pixelated right now, and that's because I forgot to to uh, put it on my GPU, so the, the viewport is going. Uh, showing it through my uh, using my cpu to to make the image and it, says it was a little bit too heavy so changing it to the gpu and uh, it takes a little while to change but then you will also see that now oh, it's not that pixelated anymore and then i'm just going to position some of the things in the scene um just adding, adding uh, making sure that the, the small details are all right again checking the feet are they okay? Yeah, uh, kind of looks so. And um, yeah, then I go to the camera again, like I said earlier in the video, <laughs> messing around with the camera, 
you can see so if you um, move the camera around you can get an, an, a different ex expression so that's why it's so important uh, as, uh, especially for me to get kind of like the framing right because it's it, it really can yeah so to me it's really important that uh, I, I get it like, like if I was going to take it like a photo I would also position things in, in a certain way oh now I'll move on to uh, still true sky uh, adding clouds and it just giving it a little more detail so it's not a clear blue sky but it has some clouds in it just messing around with the, the sliders and then and, and that's it and back to the camera again and like I said before now, now we have some skies and maybe I should do a little more adjusting and I think we are about to uh, to be ready for for, for, for the render um, so yeah, and here is the render. It took like 50 minutes. I couldn't render it on my uh, GPU, so I rendered it on my CPU. And um, yeah, that's it. And um, it took about 10 minutes to make this scene. And of course, you can throw it into Photoshop if you like, and then you can mess around with the colors and do all kinds of things. But the render was actually quite good. Um, and now we have this uh, final image with a little bit of Photoshop touch to it. But it was a it was ten minutes to kind of make this scene, and you can see uh, some of the detail. It's really really high quality. So um, if you want to, you can um, you can download this um, apocalypse uh, kit on uh, big, medium, small. I put a link in the description, and um, yeah, I'll thank you for watching. It means a lot to me that uh, people are watching my videos and. Of course, everybody says it, but I'll say it too. Please like and subscribe. It means a lot, uh, and it can push my channel forward, and I appreciate um, the support. So thank you very much.